Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner from YourMakingMe.com. This is a tutorial on how to use the task management feature, which is inside the business toolbox, which is inside or part of XMind Pro. That means if you have XMind the free version, this won't work. You actually need XMind Pro or an XMind subscription. Let's get into it. It's really simple to use the task management feature. The first thing you need to do is select the node that you want to work with. That's just the whichever box you want to have the task be associated with. So let's get into how we open the task view. We'll start by clicking on the view, go down to show task info, and it'll open up for us. From here, we can do a number of things. I'm going to run through everything here. Now, obviously, we can assign, if you have several people, we can assign to a particular individual. So I can just assign it to myself. You can have a priority. You can either have no priority set or you can have a priority from one to nine set. Remembering that if we do a search, we can search based on priority level. So that means if you want to have something that, that makes it a little easier to search, you can throw a priority level in there. So we'll just throw priority one in for now. The start time, exactly what it sounds like. We can set a specific day, but you can also go in and you can choose an hour. This will be based on the 24 hour system. So depending on what you, where you think you want to start. If you want to start it at 8 a.m., we can go ahead and get it set up for 8 a.m. on a particular day. You can go through, you can choose your duration, again, from days and hours, or you can just choose uh, an ending date and make changes that way as well. So we can go ahead and pick something a few days in the future and go from there. The next thing we can choose is our progress, how far we've gotten. You can either leave it completely off, or we can go through, we can choose some of these pre-made ones. These all go through by eighths, one eighth, one quarter, three eighths. If you don't like the precision of these things, there's a slider bar that goes down below and we can have percent by percent and we can go work our way all the way up. If you have a, well, it's not 60% done, it's actually 58% done. Well, go ahead, you can knock yourself out and take care of this. The last couple things I'm gonna mention in a couple of seconds. Let me show you something else. We'll come back, we'll talk about the bottom too. Now from here, what I'm going to suggest you do if you're working and doing a lot of things on with the task is instead of closing it, just go ahead and, and just minimize it. And usually what's going to happen is if you have one of the floating toolbars up here, the task information will stay there and it's a little bit faster to open it. It's no biggie. You, you can always go back in and, and click view and go to show task info. This just makes it a little bit quicker for here. So I'm going to minimize that. Now we can go in and we can see exactly what we've got. We know that it's marked as a, a priority one item, and this will show you it's about half done. It's about 50%. I think we said 58%, so it's mostly done. If we want to, we can go ahead and we can make changes just by clicking on the icons, and we can change it to a priority two. We can adjust. We can't do the precision, but we can go ahead and we can adjust by eighths as we work through this. So we can make some, some basic changes. The other thing that's going to show up now is if I go to the Gantt chart, my particular item is going to show up on the Gantt chart. So once we have a task created, we can flip back and forth between the task information and the Gantt chart. I'm going to go ahead and I'll just double click on this. And it'll bring up my task information. What I wanted to show you is that in the Gantt chart, it's going to show you the duration. I think we had 15 day duration. So that's what this is showing here. This, this peach bar or the pink bar, whatever color it is, is about 15 days. I'm going to double click on that. So let me describe what this checkpoint feature does. You can turn it on and off. What the checkpoint feature does is it's basically a milestone. If you're familiar with Gantt charts, it's just you're giving milestones. And you can watch as I, as I click on checkpoint, it's going to change the end date to the start date. So whatever the start date is, that's what's going to be your checkpoint or your milestone. Let's go back to the Gantt chart and I'll show you what it does. Now, it's, as opposed to showing an entire length, it just shows an actual checkpoint in time. And it says, at this point, this needs to be done or this should be done and it's awesome and we're celebrating and we're excited. So that usually checkpoints or milestones are places where this is supposed to be done or this needs to happen and we're, we're partying because we're, we, we hit our goal, right? So that's really all a checkpoint does. So you, you can set whether you want a particular point in time or whether you want to show the entire duration. The predecessors are a little weird, a little bit different. I'll show you how to get into it quick. You're just going to add, either add or you can delete them. I'll, I'll add one. It'll take a second, it'll load up everything I've got. I'm just going to pick one at random, it doesn't really matter for my purposes right now, but you would choose something that what you want to have linked with the current task. You can choose one of four dependencies. So there's finish to start, start to finish, start to start, and finish to finish. Let's go back to the mind map and I'll show you to them there. I think it's a little bit clearer. 
So I'm going to cancel this, get out of this, and let's go into task dependency. So there are four different task dependencies, and they're fairly self-explanatory. When you start using them, it just may take you a little bit of time to get your head wrapped around it, but once you're off and running, it's going to make a lot of sense. There's finish to start, meaning that the first task has to be finished before the second task can start. Start to finish means task two must be started before task one can be finished. Start to start means task two can't be started until task one is started. And finish to finish obviously means that task two can't be finished until task one is finished. Overall, it's a really cool app. It's lightweight project management which is going to be good for a lot of people. You don't have to have a, this deep understanding. It'll take you hours to get everything ready and up and running as opposed to days or months if you have some of the more complex task manager programs. So a really great use of this. You can flip back and forth with this in the Gantt chart, and actually I really enjoy using it. That's task management in XMind 2013. If you found this video useful, get the cheat sheet. It's an XMind workbook filled with tutorials, videos, and links, and all sorts of cool stuff. Imagine that, using XMind to help you use XMind. You can get it by following the link below. All I ask in exchange is that you give my newsletter a chance. Thanks for watching.